Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Pea and Butterflies. Um, today I am participating in the What Would You Make Challenge. Um, I overdid this week or overbooked this week, so I only have one project. And it is a cute little Halloween mushroom note. So we have our guest host is the DIY Struggle. And our hosts are Rustic and Lace DIY and Divine Designs. I will leave the playlist link in the description box, along with the host's uh, channels in the description box. So, I was watching a YouTube video, I don't know, last week or whatever. Actually, it was only a few days ago, I think. And I got inspired, not by what somebody made, but by what they said. I was like, a Halloween mushroom gnome, or well, a mushroom gnome. Um, I was like, hmm. So I decided I was going to implement it. I think he turned out really cute. Um, and I'm actually thinking about making for each season holiday type thing. Uh, I might turn this into a set that somebody make and purchase so they have all of them for each season slash holiday, all of that good stuff. Um, I just thought he was, was cute. Let me know what you think in the comments um, once I get done. <laughs> Pardon me. So I took and used some air dry clay. Formed a, uh, a ball, and then I just kind of molded it down, kind of squished it down a little, and molded up, uh, made a concave area in the bottom of it, so that it looked like a mushroom top. And now I am working on making the mushroom stem. I just kind of rolled it, formed it into, you know, I narrowed it as I went up. I used a little bit of water on both, uh, both pieces to adhere it together. And he doesn't really want to stand up too much at the moment, which is fine. I I've got a, a remedy for that. So since it's a Halloween gnome, I decided to put like a little, um, I don't know, I think I was thinking a witch's hat at first, but it turned out more like a Merlin hat than a witch's hat, which is fine with me. It's still Halloween-y, but it's a cute, more of a cutesy halloween -y instead of a spooky halloween -y. Um... So I just took in and rolled it out and then just started forming it where it was thicker at the bottom and narrowed up to the top and kind of curved over. And I'm using a little bit of water. If you put a little bit of water on your fingers, it'll help uh, smooth out any little crevices or cracks or whatever that are showing. And I realized I didn't make the rim, or the brim of it, quite uh, big enough, so I just uh, fixed that, made it a little bit wider. So um, I took and put him on a little wood round that I got from Hobby Lobby. I got like a whole pack of. Um, wooden pieces. Some are square. Oh, there's squares, ovals, and rounds in there, I think. I think there's like eight of each. And I just uh, used some wood glue and, and put them on there. I also use. I think I used a little bit of wood glue also to put the hat on. So now I'm taking and using antique ivory for the stem of the mushroom.
and then um, I go through and mix up um, I took some pumpkin orange and just a dab of the Waverly antique wax because it was the only brownish thing I had on hand put just a dab of it in there to kind of uh, use the orange just a little bit I didn't want to change it up too much. I just wanted to mute it just a hair. So that's, um, and that's what color I'm painting the mushroom cap. And it just dawned on me as I was watching this. I didn't make I didn't make you watch me paint the entire all of it. Um, I used black on the hat, but it just dawned on me. I don't think I painted the nose. I was going to paint the nose in the antique uh, white as well. I think I forgot to paint the nose. Oh well, that can be fixed. I can go back and paint it here in a little bit when I get done. So. Um, yeah, I took on way too much this weekend. I had two videos due for two different collaborations. And life's been kicking me in the butt, so I've been kind of running behind anyway on everything. So this was, you know, <laughs> this was my last ditch effort to at least get something in the What Would You Make um, collaboration. I would have liked to have done three projects, but it just wasn't doable. As it is, this video is being added to the playlist late. I have another one uh, coming out Friday that as soon as I get done editing and get this one posted, I need to start crafting um, with the different things that life has thrown at me lately and a full-time job. Sometimes it's uh, hard to get in and do a lot of craft. It would be absolutely amazing if I didn't have to work outside of the house and I could just do the craft thing all day long. Um, but I love my job, so that would be difficult to... <laughs> I don't plan on retiring anytime soon, and, and I love my job, so... I don't know. It would be a hard choice. So I take my crafting moments when I can. And hopefully I can get a little bit more ahead of the game. So um, with this gnome, I was going to use um, like the mop heads uh, for his beard. But because he's kind of a... I, I just felt that jute, that the twine would work, would fit better in there. So what I did was I took um, a piece of twine and I glued the piece to the underside of the mushroom cap, cut it off, glued another one next to it, so on and so forth. You kind of saw that. And then I went through and separated all of those um, strands of twine so that it was fluffier. It's still not as fluffy as I would like. I may have to find a way to add a little bit more in there, but I was running out of time. So, uh, we've got what we've got at the moment. Anything that might be lacking or if I look at it later and think, ooh, it's missing something, I can always throw, you know, add something else on there if I get inspired. That's the beauty of crafting, you know. Sometimes when you think a project is finished, then you look at it a couple days later and you're like, it's missing something. Let me add this. That's the beauty of crafting. So anyway, um, I had taken, I had to add a couple more strands on either side. And of course, Smokey there is, um, you know, Trying to put his little two cents worth in there. He keeps sticking his paw up there on my my paint tray. <laughs> For the most part, he's just kind of laying there, but he'll stretch out and stick it on the 
one of these days, I know, he's going to end up with paint all over him. He's going to flip it over on him or something. I know he is. He's already walked through one of them and thankfully missed the project that was laying next to it when he hopped up and walked across. Um, I didn't catch him quick enough. I didn't, you know, most of the time I can see when he's getting ready to jump up in certain areas. You can tell by a cat's body language when they're, when they're going to jump or when they're curious about something. I just couldn't react in time. So, anyway, I am um, trying to get this spread out, you know, and fluffed out a little bit more. And right now, as you can see, they're all kind of sticking out and up. Once I got them all separated, I took a comb, went through there to kind of um, aid in separating and fluffing it. And then I sprayed a little bit of water on it so that I could kind of tone it down and, and make it go where I wanted it to. But I had fuzz everywhere. <laughs> this... This project is not for the faint of heart if, uh, you know, you're going to have fuzz all over the place. You see, that's where I added a little bit of the water. I used one of those misters so that I didn't have, like, tons of water on it. It wasn't soaking wet, but it misted it and wet it down enough to, to kind of control where it went. And I just kind of trimmed it down. Trying to give it a little bit more of a beard shape. So th this is probably the most tedious part of the process. Yeah, Smokey was coming up on my, uh, right next to my arm where my hot glue gun and everything was. So I just picked him up and put him in his spot there. But yeah, the the separ the separating of the, the twine and, and all of that, that's probably the most tedious part of this project. Um, so here I had taken another little piece of clay. I had a wooden half bead that I was, you know, I was like, oh, I've got half beads I can use for the nose. But it wasn't until I got it out and, and whatnot, I was like, what was I thinking? That's huge. That's too big for this gnome face. So I just made one out of the, the clay. And here um, I'm taking a one more piece of twine, taking it over and wrapping down the sides of the nose with it. And then I'll separate it out and trim it up too. I was getting impatient because I was running behind and didn't, uh, wasn't waiting for the glue to dry. I was like, okay, I've got to make myself wait for a minute. It doesn't take that long for the hot glue to set up. It just was taking longer than I wanted it to. So I separated that, um, all the strands on that and brushed them out as well or combed them out blended them in with the rest of the beard, trimmed it. I had some big balls of fuzz that I ended up out of this. The first, the first stroke of the brush or the comb that I made, I pulled out quite a bit of fuzz and I was like, huh. So I flipped it, I flipped him over and put a nut, ran another bead of hot glue underneath the lip of the, um, the mushroom head just to make sure that all of my strands were very well stuck you know because I think uh, one of the, the strokes that I made pulled out quite a bit so I was like ooh I may not have it all glued in really well so if you decide to do something like this um, 
what I did was I tacked each of them on underneath there, but then go back in after you get them all in place and run a, a line of hot glue just to reinforce and make sure that all of the strands are glued and, you know, in place, held in place before you start combing it out. So we've got his little beard. And then, um, I don't know what I just showed you there. I must have, uh, not shifted the camera. Anyway, so I had one of these little jack-o'-lanterns. And I was going to put it on one side. And then I also have an, one of the little wind mushrooms from... Dollar Tree and um, I think I painted the stem on that one with the antique white too or maybe I left it I think maybe I left it I just painted the um, the top of it I did I just painted the top of it with the orange now this one I opted out of um, putting the little dots on it like I did the other. I didn't want them too matchy-matchy. He's just a little shroom. He hasn't gotten his dots yet. His dots have not come in. So. <clears throat> oh, pardon me. <clears throat> It's a, uh, I don't know what it is about fall, but there's something in the air in the fall that triggers my allergies that I'm allergic to, so I get a lot of drainage and it makes me cough a lot, so I apologize. So I glued the little jack-o'-lantern on one side, glued the little mushroom on the other side, and then I went in with, um some of the antique wax on the wood round that was on the bottom. I waited to do this because oftentimes if you put the um, antique wax on a surface and then try to glue something on there, I have found through uh, trial and error that it doesn't always stay stuck like it should. So, um, so I glued my things down to it before I took the antique wax around it. And then I'm taking a little bit of Spanish moss, tucking it up under the brim of the hat. Um, actually, I don't know if that's Spanish moss or not. Uh, it's not stringy enough to be Spanish. It's some kind of moss. I don't know. Anyway, it's whatever Dollar Tree got into that kind of... I couldn't find Spanish moss at Dollar Tree forever. And they finally got this stuff in, and it's not my favorite. But if you want a brownish moss, then it works in a pinch. And unfortunately, the Spanish moss I do have is way too stringy and, and whatnot. Um, it would have been too much for trying to put underneath the rim of the hat. So, this moss worked well. It's messy as all get out, though. Won't lie, messy as all get out. But that's okay. So on the wood round, um, I took and used some reindeer moss because it's more of a green color. I wanted it to look like he was kind of standing on a, um, I don't know, a grassy patch or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's... I just kind of went through and put a little bit here and there. 
<laughs> Smokey is getting closer and closer. He keeps inching his way toward me. Um, he is a very moochy, cuddly kitty cat. Um, but yeah, so he's always like right there under my feet, following me around. But here is, uh, the final reveal. Got, um, a couple of different angles of him in here. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and don't forget to check out the playlist as well. Show them some love too. Thanks for watching and have a great day.